Shalom, Kal Alayim Le Yahweh Ba Hashem Yahweh Shai, Ba Hashem Racha Kudash, double honors to the apostles, elders, and bishops of Green of Millstone, Uruwal, who I learned his truth from, and salutations and blessings to you, elect, starting with the 144,000. All right, so this lesson is going to be focused on 2 Ezra's chapter 4 in the GNT. All right, the GNTA. All right. Um, there's a lot of heavy things that that are happening here, right? In these chapters, when you read chapter three, you know, Ezra's is, is um, he's complaining in a righteous way, but also in a, I'll say, ignorant way, you know, because ignorant just means lack of knowledge and the intel that he didn't have, you know, is pretty much what he's asking. He's saying in the third chapter that, look, these heathens, you know they're wicked. They don't keep your laws, but look, look how much better they're doing than us. Why are they on top? And and we, your people, have been keeping your laws. Who who has kept, who has kept your laws, like us? You know. And in a sense, he's right. Of course, the, the other nations do not keep the laws. But, you know, he's 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 lacking to understand that. Look, just because these heathens are on top, you know, it doesn't make them better than us. You know, we're being punished for our wickedness. And he's having this whole rational debate with with one of the top angels, an archangel Uriel. Right? And pretty much, alright, and pretty much, you know, he's having this debate and he's trying to understand things. And we're going to get into it. This is Second Ezra 4 and 1. The angel Uriel, who had been sent to me, replied, You can't even understand what happens in this world. Do you think you can understand the ways of power most high? Yes, sir, I do, I answered. The angel continued, I've been sent to ask you to solve three riddles about what happens in this world. Um, if you can explain even one of them to me, I will answer your questions about the most high's ways and teach you why the human race has an evil impulse right because that's one of the things that Ezra was saying like pretty much look why are we why 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 has adam fell right he was complaining about he talking about oh adam what has thou done right and why is, was there evil heart sold into adam and, and his, his descendants you know and then and that we sin and then and, and you know that our lives are cut off and etc and etc well this is the most high's movie Right, you know, and it goes to show that the Most High revealed partial information to the prophets of old, and those prophets are back here today. It's not like they got left out; they're back here today, and they got the full picture. But but back then, in certain times, he revealed certain things to certain people, some more, some less. You know, a few received the the the, the full picture, like Paul. He received a lot, man. He received. Of things of, of before and things to come. You know, that's just one example. But anyway, let's go. Verse 5, I agree, sir, I said. Then he said unto me, good. How do you weigh out a pound of fire? How do you measure a bushel of wind? How do you bring back a day that has passed? I answered, why do you ask me such questions? No human being could answer them. And on a note, a side note, um, par partially Esau was given that knowledge. That's why he's known as in the, in the book of Ezekiel 28, the prince of Tyrus, thou art wiser than Daniel. Daniel was was a president. He was um he was a great man. He was a scientist. You know, he was a very knowledgeable man. He was a prophet, a seer, right? But on a, on, on on certain points, Esau can weigh out a fire. He can bring back a day, right? Through motion picture, you know, even pictures themselves, video. You know, now he's combining AI with 5G, 6G. All right, he's doing all these things. Verse 7, then he said, What if I had asked you how many dwelling places that there are at the bottom of the sea? How many rivers flow into the waters beneath the earth? How many rivers are there above the dome of the sky? Where are the exits from the world of the dead? Where are the entrances to paradise? All right? And that's the spiritual realm. Where's the entrance? <laughs> Esau don't know that. Right? 
He's trying to tap into the spiritual on the left hand side. But these things, see, it says, if I had asked you these questions, you might have answered, I have never gone down into the waters beneath the earth, and I have not yet entered the world of the dead. I have never gone up to heaven. But all I have asked you about is fire, wind, and the day that has just passed, things that you have experienced. Yet you have given me no answer. You can't even understand things that you have been familiar with since you were a child. How then can your little mind understand the ways of the Most High? Can someone already worn down by this corrupt world understand the ways of the incorruptible power? When I heard this, I fell downward on the ground. And this reminds me of um, the book of Isaiah. Isaiah 55. And eight, for my thoughts are not your thoughts, ne neither are your ways my ways, said the Lord Yahweh. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. Right? Verse eight in the NLT, my thoughts are nothing like your thoughts, says the Lord, and my ways are far beyond anything you could imagine. <laughs> right? So this just... This is just showing you, look, our, these vessels that we're in, they're not able to comprehend, you know, everything. Even Solomon said, look, he went mad. Right? Didn't he say that? He said, I, I had found that all the way. Uh, um, hold on. Yeah. Uh, Ecclesiastes 1 and 17. And I gave my heart, meaning mind, to know wisdom and to know madness and folly. I perceived that this also is a vexation of spirit, right? And NLT, so I set out to learn everything from wisdom to madness and folly. But I learned firsthand that pursuing all this is like chasing the wind, right? The greater my wisdom, the greater my grief to increase knowledge only increases sorrow, you know? So these, 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 these vessels, man... They in it, right? And 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 you know, we're gonna have all that knowledge, wisdom, uh, prudence, judgment in the kingdom, in the bodies, in the incorruptible bodies, right? These corruptible bodies, they cannot inherit the kingdom of the most high, right? Matter of fact, let me get this scripture in the book of Sirach, I just thought of it. Let's see if I can find it. Sirach 17 and 30. It says, For all things cannot be in men, because the Son of Man is not immortal. Right? We are the, we are sons of men. Son of man. Son of man just means son of Adam. Right? Um, you have the sons of you have the children of men, right? This children of the, of, of the wicked and, and the sons of God. But Son of man is also that's why Yahweh Shah is called son of man. Right? We're all sons of men as well because we're all sons of Adam. Right? What is brighter than the sun? Yet the evil thereof faileth. So like yet the light thereof faileth, and flesh and blood will imagine evil. But the point being in verse 30, you know, we cannot we cannot comprehend all these things. So this is just a good example of yeah, we, we can ponder on these things. But now we have the full picture anyways, so we don't have to. Why are we so effed up? Why is this going? No, no, no. We understand. And first of all, we're at the end of this thing. We're at the end of this shithole kingdom. So why are you going to uh, get in your feelings, man? Ezra said, right, the book of Ezra is 14. Second Ezra is 14. It says, let go from the mortal thoughts and put aside to thee the thoughts that are most uh, uh, heavy unto thee. Right? Verse 12, and, and said to him, it would have been better if we had never been born than to, have, than to have to live in a world of sin and suffering without understanding why things happen as they do. The angel Uriel said, answered, I once went into the woods 
and heard the trees plotting together. They were saying, let's go to war against the sea and push it back so that we may have more room. But the waves of the sea also plotted together and said, let's conquer the woods and extend our territory. But all the plotting of the trees was useless because fire came and destroyed them. And the plotting of the sea was just as useless because the sand stood firm and blocked its advance. Now if you were to judge, if you were the judge and had to decide between them, which would you pronounce right? I reply, they were both wrong because trees belong on the land and waves belong in the sea. You have given the right answer, he said, so why can't you see the answer to your own problems? For just as trees have their place on the land and waves have their place in the sea, so the people of this world can understand only what goes on in this world and only heavenly things and only heavenly beings can understand what goes on in heaven. Please tell me, sir, I asked, why then I was, was I given the ability to understand anything? <laughs> I am not interested in asking questions about what goes on in the heavens. I am only concerned about, what, about things that go on around us. Why has the Most High allowed Israel to be disgraced by foreign nations? Why was he? Le why has he let the nation he loves be handed over to the power of godless nations? Why do the law and the covenant that were given to our ancestors mean nothing anymore? Why do we die as quickly as insects? Why is our life shorter than a breath? Why does the Most High think us unworthy of his mercy? Why, does, why doesn't the Most High do something to help his own people? These are the questions that I want to ask. Uriel answered, if you live long enough, you will be surprised at you, what you will see. Because the sage is rapidly passing away. See? And, you know, it, it seems long in our time, but things are moving fast. You know? And, 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 and I know brothers can testify in this time. In this time, present, you know, current time period that we're in, things are just on. I, I always have this example of back in the day, you had the remote on the VHS, you know, to fast forward, you had the one arrow, but then you wanted to go faster. You have the double arrow, you have the two arrows. You press double fast forward, you know, and this thing is damn near on triple fast forward right now. I'm talking about this time, you know, weeks are just flying off the, uh, off the calendar, man, off the pages. Months are just flying by. Seasons, right? Summer is pretty much over. You know, we're in the last last part of summer, last, last month, right? Verse 27, this age is so full of misery and imperfection that it cannot hold all the blessings that the Most High has promised the righteous in the time to come. The evil about which you have asked me has already been planted, but the time for its harvesting has not yet arrived right so hey man everything is measured everything is balanced um you know nobody gets away you know and that's what i perceived that's what i that that's me personally what i've come to understand when i came into this truth in 2000 i won't no i won't say into the truth i found the apostles in late 2000 and then around 2008 9 i actually made the conversion and you know, on the highways in 2009, 10, 11, 12, I'm perceiving the world, I'm learning. First of all, I'm coming up as a man myself. I was, I was young, I was, in, I was 17, 18, 19, and I'm coming up in truth, and I'm looking around, I'm saying, damn, these people are wicked. People I went to high school are wicked. You know, people I work with are wicked. I'm looking at, you know, I go out, out and about, you know, on, on the highways, everything, I'm, I'm looking at these people, these are wicked people. You had World Star back then. You see a bunch of shit. Now you have Instagram and, and all these different things. You can just scroll and see these things right uh, daily, you know. And you're just perceiving this shit. And you're just looking at it. Uh, damn, these people are wicked. But where's the judgment? <laughs> but, but, like I said, what I perceived is, look, all those people are wicked. Some of the, a lot of those people caught hell. They caught judgments. Some of those people are still kicking and living and, and living and jiving. You know, and, and doing their thing. A lot of people are catching hell right now. But what I perceive is there's a lot of more pe there's a lot more people that have to be born and that have been born, the gener the gen generation alphas, 
right? And they have to kind of grow up to at least be teenagers or young adults to to really realize and catch hell, you know, for the uh, uh, for the impending judgment that's about to come. Martial law, Jacob's trouble, right? Uh, desperation, miseries, right? The proud. So you're looking at these new people, these this new generation coming up. The Lord is primarily waiting for them, has been waiting for them, for them to come up so they can get stricken down, you know? And that's what I just read. The evil which you have asked me has already been planted. So what does that mean? People have been exercising wickedness for generations. And going back to my, my, my earlier point about the fact that nobody gets away. Yeah, you can sow wickedness one generation. You, you die. You come back in your third or fourth. Sow it, sow it again. You live nice. Sow more wickedness. Come back in your third and fourth, fifth. And, and, and whatever people are coming back now, they must be very wicked because they came back in the worst fucking time that you can possibly come back in. And a lot of people have passed away. And that's mercy, man. Whitney Houston. You know, all these celebrities that are passing away. That's actually mercy, man. So that means these people that are coming up now, these new Jakes and, and you new heathens. And you guys are wicked, man. You guys are some real wicked souls. And the most high got your tab for maybe a thousand years ago. And you got all these charges listed like, nigga, you, I'm a, I got you. I got you. You're going to feel starvation. You're going to feel desperation and misery. Loss of amenities and, 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 and th th this Western quality of life that you've been used to. You're going to feel it stripped from you and, and, and left out in the cold. Let's see how you feel. That's what's coming, man. All right. Let's keep going. Verse 29, this evil must be harvested. We're in that time of the harvest. Hey, Matthew 13, right? The angels, the angels said, uh, the harvest is the end of the world. We are at the door right now. Okay? And this world where it was planted must be removed before the new age where the good is to be planted can appear. At the beginning of time, one grain of evil seed was sown in the heart of Adam. See how much wickedness it has already produced. Think of how much more it will produce before it is cut down and threshed out at judgment day. See? So how much more? Right? You're seeing that, man. You, we're, 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 we are living in the climax of wickedness. You have to understand this. The world has always been wicked since the time Adam fell. Since the time Eden was no more. Right? Paradise. You know? And there has been uh, uh, um, up and down, you know? sequences right up and down uh, up up would be what uh, the flood <laughs> that was that was a height of wickedness but this is is so much more right this is such a even more a uh, 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 higher pinnacle of wickedness that the scriptures let you know that hey this is a time that has never been you know the time that's about to come is a time that has never been in in terms of judgment Right? So that means it was higher than the times right before the flood of, of Noah. Noah's flood. Right? Those days. And those days were some wicked ass days. The most I flooded the earth. He was displeased. So now he's going to flood the earth with nuclear fire. With, you know, with fire. The element fire. Right? That's letting you know something, man. You got to take that in. Judgment that is coming. A hey, judgment day. Terminator. Terminator 2, Judgment Day. It's one of my favorite movies. All right. That day is going to be terrible, man. Verse 31, you can see for yourself what a big crop this one evil seed has produced. How terrible will be the harvest on Judgment Day when these countless heads of grains are threshed out? Then I ask, how long do we have to wait before this happens? Why are our lives so short and so full of misery? And, you know, like I said, Ezra is complaining righteously, but he's also... Complaining in a selfish, ignorant kind of way because he's saying, look, man, we, you know, we're your people. But guess what? Everybody's going to know the truth. And the insight has been given to the prophets first. You know, the secrets have, have been revealed unto his servants, the prophets. This is Ezekiel 39 and 23. And the heathen, along with you, Jake's too, 
shall know that the house of Israel went into captivity for their iniquity. Right? Because they have trespassed against me, therefore hid I my face from them and gave them into the hand of their enemies. So, so fell they all by the sword. Okay? According to their uncleanness and according to their transgressions have I done unto them and hid my face from them. Point blank period. Right? Point blank period, man. Um, verse 34, Uriel answered, and it's interesting because Uriel, um, I believe, I believe in me, uh, well, it has to do with light, uh, Aral Ya Allah, which is my light is the most high or the most high is my light, right? And he's kind of, he's shining the light right now on some serious heavy topics of life, of reincarnation, of destiny, of conditions of life, everything, man. You know, it's very heavy. Um, here you'll answer, 34. Don't be in a great, greater hurry than the most high power. You are thinking only of yourself. <laughs> what I just say, right? But the most high has to be concerned about everybody. See, it's all a balance, man. The righteous and the wicked, you know. And, and the righteous got to catch their licks too. You know, whoever the elect is, they are catching hell. They are being chastened. Right? And they got to be chastened. Or else you're bastards, right? As the scripture says. You're, in, you're not sons. Verse 35. Your questions are the same ones asked by the souls of the righteous, dead in the places where the Mosai is keeping them waiting. How long must we wait here? When will the day of judgment come? When will we get our reward? Because they keep coming back into, into hell, pretty much. Right? The, 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 the righteous, right? They die. In their generations, like, like, you got to think about it. During the time of Yahweh Shai, they died. A lot of them were, were, were put to death. And then about, uh, what, 100, 200, whatever the time period was, they came back again in the reincarnation in the Byzantine Empire, whoever they were. And then they came back again and the Byzantine Empire was falling. You know what I mean? They, they keep coming back into these <laughs> messed up lots. Medieval times, Jake was killing each other, blood feuds, plagues were happening. Then they came back again into the Renaissance. Esau coming up. Then they came back again at the at the at the turn of the century, uh, the Industrial Revolution, and in, you know in fucking slavery or whatever the case is. They keep coming into in, into the lot where, where where you know pretty much the jungle. Welcome to the jungle, <laughs> you know chaos and, and and randomness and anarchy. But it's all it's all the Yahweh Bashem Yahweh movie. You know, and it's all, although it seems as, as anarchy and chaos, it's harmonized. It's all in balance. There's order and chaos. Just like Esau likes to use that shit, order and chaos, that he thinks he's doing. He's actually a tool of the Most High, causing chaos. That's what Esau feels to, to grasp. You know, verse 36, the archangel Jeremiah Answers them, it will happen as soon as the complete number of those who have suffered as you have are here. For the Most High has weighed this age, measured the years, and numbered the days. Nothing will be changed until the time has run its predetermined course. Like guys uh, from the old school thought the year 2000 was it. And that was a, a big sifting because a lot of guys fell out. Then the apostles through the spirit of Yahweh Shem Yahushai pushed on and taught seven more years. Which is a righteous number that, that, that that's an omen. They taught seven years until the spirit got on them to go on YouTube in the in in the month of July, I believe, of two thousand seven, and that opened up the floodgates of of GMS Dallas, GMS San Francisco, uh, GMS Chicago, GMS Toronto. You know, all kinds of GMS camps came up from that from that year two thousand seven when they started studying two thousand eight. Some brothers went out. We went out in two thousand nine. Then you had all kinds of brothers in 2010, 11, and, and so on and so forth. Right? Verse 38. But sir, and, and that was all balanced. That was all meant to be. Which is scary because a lot of guys back then in the 80s, 90s thought it was that time. And a lot of, majority of them, like Apostle Taharo always brings out the history, they fell out. Terrifying. Right? Verse 38, but, sir, I replied, all of us are here on earth are such wicked sinners. 
Is it possible that because of our sin, the righteous dead are having to wait for their reward? His answer was, can a pregnant woman keep her child from being born after her nine months are up? No, sir, she cannot. I answered, and he continued, in the world of the dead, the place where the Most High has stored the souls is like a womb. It is eager to return the souls entrusted to it from the beginning of the world as a woman is to end her labor pains. When that happens, you will have the answer to all your questions. Please, sir, I asked, if you think I am able to understand it, can you? Tell me one more thing. Is the time that is still to come longer than the past that has already gone by? <laughs> I know how long the past has been, but I don't know the future. Come here and stand at my right, he commanded, and I will show you a vision and explain its meaning. So I stood by him and looked, and I saw a blazing fire pass by in front of me, and when it was gone, I saw that smoke was still there. Then a rain cloud passed by in front of me, bringing a heavy downpour of rain. And when the downpour was over, there was still a light rain. Think about this, said Uriel. Just as the downpour was greater than the light rain that followed it, and the fire was greater than the smoke left behind, in the same way the time that has passed is much longer than the time to come. The time that is left is like the light rain and the smoke. Please tell me, I asked, do you think... I will live until that time. If not, who will be alive when it happens? Now, Ezra was answered this because he was given a vision in the book of uh, uh, chapter 15. And he said, woe is me, woe is me, who will deliver me in those days? So he saw himself in those times, you know. It's not like he just seen it and it was abstract and it was just away from him. No, he was in the, in the midst of those times. So now he's asking, will I live until that time? Right, And the angel pretty much said, look, the time that has passed is much longer than the time to come. So he said, we won't got much longer. But even from this time, this was the time of what? The Persian Empire, 400 years about until Yahushai came, which is another 2,000 years until now. So this is 2,400 years ago, which is about two and a half days to the Lord. <laughs> not that long, right? Which is, it's not that long. He is right. The angel is right because prior to this, you had how many thousands of years? Right, so we, we, we don't got uh, even uh, 3,000 years. We're in the third day, right? Pursuant to the book of Hosea, that, that third day of, 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 of revival, right? He answered, uh, hold on one sec, please, please, verse 51, please tell me, I ask, do you think I will live until that time? If not, who will be alive when it happens? He answered, I can tell you some of the signs of the world or of the end, if that is what you are asking about. But I am not here to tell you how long you will live. And in any case, I don't know. <laughs> so, it's it's on a need-to-know basis, man. Even the angels don't know. Even Yahweh Shai doesn't know the exact moment. And Yahweh Shai knows everything else. Right? He sits at the right-hand side of, of Yahweh. But he, at that moment, when he's when he's ready to come back, he doesn't know. He's waiting, right? So what we do know is a blessing, man. That's that, you know that that's what I get from this whole thing. You should be grateful for what, what you have been given. You know what we have been manifested in this knowledge, which is a lot of things. We 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 know more than the regular man. That's for damn sure, right? And we know more than a lot of these top men. I'm talking about these warlocks and these and and these sorcerers. Anyway, hope you're edified with that. Uh, very beautiful chapter. You know, it speaks volumes. So, Kahalalim la Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, Bashem Rachahakurash, and Demolanus to the apostles, elders, and bishops of GMS. Shalom to the elect.